You can listen to The Professional Left on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for December 1st, 2017. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live, it's The Professional Left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal, where we always fully cooperate with federal prosecutors. I've got news for you, Drift Glass. Yes, The number darling. one rule that my ex-husband gave his law students was... Uh, let me guess. Don't lie to the FBI. Don't talk to the FBI. Yeah, yeah. Well, yes. But if you have to... Do not... No. Do not talk to the FBI. Do not talk to the FBI. Get a lawyer. Right. Issue a written statement that your lawyer has checked and double-checked for false yep. statements. Yep. Be, be more than willing to cooperate in writing with your attorney present, making sure that they know you have no intention of lying to them about anything. And then don't recall. This is this is what Jeff Sessions is doing this because he's a longtime attorney and knows how to – he knows it's illegal to lie to Congress, yes, right? Yes, he, he knows how to lawyer up properly. Yes. Well, and and it's, it's dishonest and immoral and terrible. But uh, and and politically not very astute, but it doesn't get you in trouble with the law because no. they will. Fi- if you talk to an FBI agent for an hour for 45 minutes, they will find a lie that you said sure. <laughs> in sure. that time period. And then mm-hmm. they've got you. And um, that's the beginning of the well. And, and here's the thing. If they were smart and knew anything mm-hmm. uh, and they, if they hadn't been assured in advance that. Don't worry, I got your ass. I got you covered. I'm the president now. I can do whatever I want. Right, right. Um, I'm sure they'd be. They would have been a lot more cautious. Uh, but the fact that they're fuck ups, <laughs> the fact that the sweaty Von Giggly man keeps going on the Chris Hayes show and just spilling the beans and saying, "Well, maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. I don't know. Maybe I'm a colluder. Who knows?" That's the sort of the brain trust they had at operation there. That's what keeps you in front of your television. Yeah. And you know what? If you're going to stay in your home for the rest of your life, we have a new sponsor for you. <laughs> See, yes, I, I'm just wrenching that segue. We'd like to welcome a new fake sponsor this week. It's Agora Fabulous. Agora, Agora Fabulous. I really Agora think Fabulous. this should be a company. I, I really do too. And I'm, I'm trademarking it right now. I'm saying this is mine, my idea. I'm putting it on the air, um, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Agora Fabulous, uh, your personal curated never, ever, ever leave home again bundling service. So the question is do you already get your mattresses and sheets and clothes and shoes and snacks and batteries and pens and yoga and hookers and prepared food and unprepared food and booze and razors and bicycles and mustache wax and sex toys and dog treats and lanyards and chocolates and contact lenses and eyeglasses and houseplants delivered to your home? Why struggle with dozens of different websites when Agora Fabulous will do it for you? Agora Fabulous, because it's scary out there. <laughs> You have been mentioning this a number of times as we're watching MSNBC, yeah. that there will be ad after ad after ad of home delivery of stuff yes. that you used to go out and buy. Do you cast regularly? Do you need a cath <laughs> delivered to your home? And, it, and it's an infinite list. And there was a – actually, there's a uh, this is a little bit of science fiction university just to tease people because I've been getting emails saying, please bring that back. I don't care if the world is coming to an end. I'd like to hear you talk a little bit more about Robert Heinlein. I know that's true. I know that's my mom, but that's okay. <laughs> um, there's a story, a, a collection of stories by Clifford Simak called City, I believe. There's a bunch of – Clifford Simak, wonderful science fiction writer. But one of them is what happens when your every need is met and and the cities are simply abandoned mm-hmm. and everyone lives on estates you know, that, that are like 12 generations old yeah. and nobody goes out anymore. And – what happens when agoraphobia becomes the norm? Mm-hmm. Um, there's also a, 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 an Asimov story, I believe, about um, people who go outside and see their own homes or homes from the outside and don't know what they're looking at because they've never left their house. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we're not quite there yet, but oh my God, every podcast except ours, uh, I believe in America, is that is sponsored. It's sponsored by some home, home delivery, delivery service. Grocery service, yeah. Right. Yeah. And, you know, we shop local. And when we don't, we, we ask you to use our Amazon link. Yeah. But I, I understand the, the uh, I understand the need for it. Lord knows we go out when we have to and grab stuff for the kids when we're in a hurry. But if you've become unable to cope with the outside world, 
boy, do we have a fake service for you. <laughs> well, we, we don't want I, you to I get do, better. I do blame the crackdown on cell phone use when you're driving yes. for that, because if you have to drive somewhere, you're off your phone for, you know, minutes of time, whole, minutes. Whole 15 minutes in Springfield. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, there are parts of this country, by the way, for those of you that are on the coast and we love you, uh, where you can get anywhere in town in 10 minutes. In yes. Springfield, Illinois, you can get from the uh, state fairgrounds, which is in the far northern side of town, mm -hmm. all the way south to the border of Chatham and Springfield in the southern border, mm -hmm. in 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Good. Well, now that they've closed down a major thoroughfare for well, two years, it might be 20 minutes. <laughs> They and the are. rush hour. By the way, we're doing we're doing major. Uh, I I would look one block out of your way in Springfield is a major detour. I, I can't make it. I can't make yeah, it. We're, I don't know I how we're going to manage. Yeah, no. But they are finally, uh, and I'm so happy about this. I'm willing to take a detour for two years. They're they're doing high speed rail from from St. Louis to Chicago, and uh, that goes straight through Springfield. And as a result, they're having to put in underpasses, uh, which is going to make. <laughs> The trip yeah. across town from east to west and west to east that much faster. Yes, in the long term. <laughs> well, the longest wait you have in Springfield is when there's a train, right? A, a cow train is especially the one that. I I know, tell I tell people I'm going to take you on a mission trip to Chicago, mm -hmm. where parking is twenty dollars a day. Yeah, wow. And, we and go out to watch... dinner at night and it's free parking downtown. Are you yeah. kidding me? Yeah. And people pitch. I had to walk a block. Oh man, really. <laughs> It's true. Really? In these shoes? I've never lived in a city yet. They're like, you know, I had to park on the other side of the block. Oh, my God. Anyway, hi, everybody. Hello, everybody. Um, uh, I want to start, of Illinois. if you don't mind, I want to start. I know we're going to talk about our, our foray into local media. I, see, uh, that was my, my whole segue. I worked for like 12 hours okay. in the segue. You want to do no, that I'm kidding. Right I'm supposed to be like, go ahead. Well, I'm, I'm, it, no. it is all connected because what yeah. I wanted to start with was to thank our listeners because yeah. uh, we, of of the, the top three things that have kept me sane since Donald Trump was elected president. I better be on this list. You're on this list. Okay. For sure. Uh, and you pull me away from Twitter, which no one else can do. Um, our listeners. I'm your John Kelly. Top. No, no, <laughs> no, Kelly's. no, 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 no one in the White House is keeping me sane at this point. But our listeners are keeping me sane and mm -hmm. hearing from them and hearing their struggles and just checking in with each other every once in a while. I heard I've heard from two listeners this week, one by email and one on uh, Twitter DM, which, by the way, if I follow you and you follow me, uh, you can DM me. Go ahead. Um, I Hi. might not get to you for a day, but I'm happy to chat with you. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, I've heard from people and they're just, I'm feeling really low today I'm, or I'm feeling just so frustrated. I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, there were two specific people this week that I heard from and uh, was able to just talk with them about it and like, and, and say, you know, there are times when I can't even watch Rachel Maddow. I just right. can't turn it on because I'm so strung up by saturated, like, yeah, exa saturated, but not just saturated, really yeah. um, angry. Really, right. just so so hurt by what's happening, and right. I've, we've talked about this before that it just hurts me how uh, uncaring the Republican Congress is. Well, and, Republicans generally, I'm sorry, right, but well, Republicans I know generally. that, but I'm I want to I want to hold the Congress responsible because they said they wanted this job. Exactly. And so I, you know, I I have I have to say there are there are uh, levels of lack of sympathy. <laughs> Yes, and fair the person on the ground who has voted Republican their whole life because they want low taxes and they think they watch Sean Hannity because they feel a tribal, you know, I I get it. They're they're lost cause. They mm -hmm. shouldn't be voting. I get mm -hmm. everything you've ever said about them. I know, but they are not responsible to the level that Mitch McConnell is. But just getting off of Twitter, getting away from it for a little bit, mm -hmm. and I wanted to um, also mention um, I. I wrote about this in uh, our journal writing class that we're teaching, Drift Lab. Yes, we do uh, that. I saw a video, and I, I wrote about this video um, in, t in our timed writing, mm -hmm. uh, about this group of nuns that have the number one album on the Billboard charts for classical music, and they are a group of cloistered nuns in Michigan. They happen to have been discovered, their singing voices have happened to have been discovered by Oprah, so they're called Oprah's Nuns, which is such an oxymoron anyway. Yeah, 
Yeah. But that's why they're so popular. And they're, they have beautiful voices. And their Christmas album is really beautiful and lyrical and everything. But this video was about their life. And apart from the chapel where they sing, uh, their lives are Spartan. They aren't on their phones. They aren't watching cable. They aren't, you know, many of them aren't even driving cars. They're just being nuns and praying mm -hmm. and singing. Nunning out. Yep. <laughs> Nunning yep. out in, mm -hmm. and wearing habits. I mean, they, they wear habits. And, uh, you know, I have a lot more connection to nuns on the bus in terms of what they're doing. But it, it really made me think, these nuns uh, and their lifestyle, about withdrawal and how we all need to find a space where we can be in the world and not of the world. Yes. And that doesn't mean you have to be a Catholic or a Christian or a believer in God or anything. Uh, you just have to find some mental space. And if that's in religion, great. If that's not in religion, if that's just in breathing, that's great too. But you've got to mm -hmm. find it because um, these are tough times. And these are, yes, they are. these are tough times for anyone with a heart. Uh, so, um, I'm thinking about you guys. I know you're thinking about me. Hang in there. Mm -hmm. And we heard from a lot of our listeners this week, uh, through the New York times and through Illinois times. <laughs> uh, I want you to tell this whole story cause it's, it's kind of fun. All right. Once upon a time, there was a little podcast in the Midwest that nobody loved. No, a lot of people loved it. A lot of people love this Midwest podcast. Uh, husband and wife team, liberals, middle of the Midwest. They've been podcasting for, for years and years and years and years. Um, every Friday, like clockwork. And the New York Times uh, busted out with this great article probably two weeks ago now. Yeah, about, days, yeah. About the arrival of the liberal podcast. Because, man, finally, 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 liberals have a voice. <laughs> and at long last, someone in the wilderness has, has is, is working on the problem of the the right has Rush Limbaugh and they have Fox News and there's no liberal media. Come on, let's let's not lie to ourselves. Finally, and I'm looking for my name or my handle or professional left in there somewhere. And no, it's the uh, it's Pod Save America. It's Crooked Media, and That's they're love. Lo they're lovely people. They're lovely yeah. people. Um, they make a shit ton of money. Um, and they and they earn it. Uh, they take their show on the road, but they they're building a network of affiliated blogs. I'm sorry, affiliated podcasts, and they do blogging. They write uh, in something called long form blue gal. I'm not sure if you're familiar <laughs> with this. It's it's much longer than 280 characters. Uh, I it's, gotta it's... say, I gotta say, one of the people on Pod Save America <laughs> sent a tweet uh -huh. about a month ago, yeah. saying, and and get t believe me, I get it. They are staffers from the Obama administration. Sure. Okay. Sure. They they spent time in the they Oval Office their with Barack Obama, crushed it, along with the rest of us, and they also did. their professional expectations crushed as well. Yes. This is absolutely bad. Yep. I get it. But uh, one of them tweeted, um, "I have finally written my first blog post since Trump's inauguration." Yes. And, and I, I went... just had to reply with a GIF. From um, Die Hard of Welcome to the Party, pal. Welcome to the Party, you know? pal. <laughs> yeah, that's um, great. This bloody Bruce Willis, you know, yeah. with his with with throwing a chair out a window. Well, because we've been at this, you know, nonstop blogging on the for, day after for, the election, we, on inauguration day. Uh, you know, through our wet, we podcasted on our wedding day. We podcasted on a day when you had surgery, and we've been we've been, <laughs> we've been writing since it's, the Bush administration. Yeah, and it's but it's I feel as though there are times where you and I uh, get a little bit caught up in the magic that this podcast is to us personally of reaching people who then, yes. you know, a send us money, mm -hmm. b uh, write back and say they heard what we said and loved it. And we, I, I think sometimes we get caught up in a little bit of magical thinking of thinking if we miss a week, the, the spell will break, right. <laughs> you know, and right. I don't want to have that feeling about it, but I think that's in there in the mix. Um, we could take a break if we needed to, sure. uh, but we need to be here. That's right. The, right now. We, this is where we need to be. Exactly. Um, and, and we've been, and we've been here. I mean, I've been writing pretty much every day mm -hmm. for, Almost 13 years. So do people do need a, a place to break away from, mm -hmm. you know, a, a way to get away from things. Um, but we so we were um, uh, it, it wouldn't be so frustrating. New York Times article. Anyway, there's right. a New York Times article about Pod Save America. Which and, is it, great. and if if it were the invention of a brand new thing, 
uh, you know, I would have shrugged it off. But but we keep reading things that we were doing long, 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 long ago, and people thrilled that they this brand new thing has been discovered and, and it's it's life saving to them. And I have no problem with that, other than the fact, well, okay, <laughs> what about the people who've been doing it for a long time? How did you not know about them? What is what is the failure here? What synapse is not firing? And my only thing is. I'm I'm not going to put um, – I've had my own blog roll amnesty, Blue Gal, so I've cleared uh, Crooked Media off of my blog roll. <laughs> no, you uh, didn't. Because they're not – you know, they haven't been at it long enough. <laughs> I was told explicitly in 2004 there was no room for me. I know. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I so, know. Yeah. so here we are many, many, many years later, uh, and I'm going through this article, and it's basically just – you know, it's it's this one podcast. That's the salvation. There was a there was a parallel article that was basically this person's favorite, um, you know, listening podcast list from the coasts. So it was right. L.A., D.C., L.A., D.C., New York, New York, L.A., D.C. That was the other article. And both of those, by the way, are linked at our Facebook page. Both right. of these articles where I asked our listeners to go over there and both of them, to their credit, had comment sections. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, yeah. And and leave a comment about your other favorite podcast. Yes, please. And yeah, the one no other... that was in Salon or Slate or whatever the other one was, I'm sorry, I can't remember. But, uh, yeah, the guy just basically lifted his iTunes list off of his phone yeah. and wrote a listicle about it and got a lot of criticism already. But by the time I had discovered it, had gotten a lot of criticism of, dude, you know, something that's recorded in the studios of NPR is not a podcast. Right. <laughs> but the so... New York Times article was, the, was this is the next big thing. <laughs> Uh, but I've I've lived through the next big thing now three or four times, right, right. and uh, being an early adopter doesn't help you if you're in the wrong zip code. Right. So um, we said to our listeners, why don't you go out there? In fact, we said it last week, I believe, on, on Facebook. Yeah. On, on Facebook, I why don't you go out there and and take this opportunity to list your favorite podcasts? Mm -hmm. Because they're not going to hear about your favorites unless you tell them. Yep. And you know, if you mentioned us, that's great. But your favorites. So a local reporter in Springfield. Uh, was cruising through Bruce Rushton, uh, who's a very nice gentleman, a very good writer, he was cruising through this, looking for stories, and noticed that there were all these mentions of this podcast that was in his backyard. Yes. So we got a phone call. We got and... an email, and we got a phone call, or, uh, or I called him back. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we expressed a little bit of concern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That, mm -hmm. You know, he respected the fact that you work here. And, and I'm... I'm a little bit um, under the radar. Yeah. And he respect. He said, you know, asked me if I had a police, you know, if I was dodging the law. He asked if there was a warrant out on you. Yeah. Yes. That's really, he didn't want to cover for a Dude, warrant. I'm not, I'm not Michael <laughs> Flynn. Okay. You know, my, my record is clean. So far as you know, my record yeah. is clean. And so it was like, oh, okay. You're, you're just, you, you have reasons and they're, they, they're fine. So we had a, like a, and we didn't really have an interview. We had an hour long, really pleasant conversation because mm -hmm. he's, you know, he's like in the same universe we are. And it was. Right. A relief and a delight to talk to people who are who understand what you're going through. And, and can... that, was, that was the first thing he said to me when I made the initial call to talk about, do we want to do this interview with him? Yeah. Uh, he said, I've listened to one of your shows and I really like how you go after the media. Which we do. Uh, and call them out for both siderism and make them you know, hold them responsible for what they say. So, you know, I could tell he was sort of getting it, you know, getting what we are. And then he really got how to cover you and me and us put and everything this. together. Yeah. And so there's a link to this article that he wrote. Uh, mm -hmm. On our website, on us, on our Facebook, on us. And it's a really good article, and it's so, a really I mean, good article, and uh, we are honored that he did that. And so, absolutely, and yeah. I, I believe we've driven more traffic to the Illinois Times than they've seen in a long, yeah, long... certainly more comments. Yeah. <laughs> they have 22 comments on one page, you know, and it's yeah, not. Which is... Why should I pay for somebody else's insurance? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> God fearing man like Donald Trump don't need to take your guff, liberal. Right, right. No. Uh, it's you know, it's it's. It's fans of ours. It's people we, you know, who who like what we do, being very respectful and very nice and saying nice things, which is great. So we're 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 locally famous, yay! Yeah. Anyway, that was very cool. That was very cool, and that was that is fulfilling, it is. because it really does feel like what we are doing matches the time. The people yeah. we are, what we do, are, is is appropriate for the times and places in which we live. Well, this isn't navel gazing. We want you guys no. to know that you responded, and we appreciate it. Absolutely, <laughs> it, it brought attention to a uh, to us and to our show. Um, that all came from you guys doing that. 
Now, we're, we also let you know we're recording this Friday afternoon at like 3.30. Yeah, as kids come back from school. So, so if so you're we're, we're, from upstairs, that's what happened. Yeah. That's me hitting the desk with my head. <laughs> uh, so today was the day that Michael Flynn um, became a, a lovely, beautiful songbird. And mm-hmm. and started ratting out the rest of the crew. Well, I was uh, gonna say I I played on Twitter the I'm asking people for lyrics to um, the theme song from Flipper. You know, yeah. Flipper, Flipper. Yeah. Well, I'm okay. going after Cats in the Cradle because it's gonna be Jared next. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, it is. It is gonna be Jared next. Yes, I it is. I really think Jared was the one who told Flynn to go ahead and call the Russians and make I, sure they don't get mad at us. You know. Um, and, and he has a lot of pri- – so anyway, this is all speculative. And today is also the day when the Senate is going to uh, fuck us all over by passing – very likely going to pass a, a horrible uh, – it isn't even a tax bill. But I would like to lead off with Blue Gal talking about Bible Bitch. Bible Bitch. That's not scriptural. Bible Bitch comes to us uh, courtesy of James Comey, Drift Glass, who uh, tweeted today – this. He's very tall. Very tall gentleman. I, I – Tweeted to him. Um, I he tweeted a while ago a very nice picture of himself with his wife. Hmm? Uh, he and his his wife was holding a Cosmo and a tray of onion rings, and it was her birthday. She got to do whatever she wanted, and she did Cosmo and onion rings. I I can identify with that. Yeah. But more even more so, I can identify with the fact. That she comes up to uh, almost his shoulder. Uh-huh. <laughs> He's six eight, and she's not. And so I did. I did put a reply on that photo to say, "Where do you get your pants, James Comey?" Because mm-hmm. six eight. We uh, need to you know. know. I have a feeling James Comey can afford custom pants. He does. He does. Uh, but uh, anyway. He tweeted, but justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream (laughs) on the news of Michael Flynn Mm -hmm. flipping and getting a plea deal. Okay. So I went, uh, a couple people tweeted that to me and mentioned Bible Bitch, and thank you again. This is what I mean. You get that kind of feedback. It gets a little addictive. Uh, Really appreciate it. Uh, But I went and looked it up. I went and looked up the whole book of Amos 5. Um, justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream is not some prophet talking. In the words of Amos, this is God talking. Uh-huh. God wants justice <laughs> to roll down like waters, and he is instructing us to make justice and righteousness a priority. Mm-hmm. And so then I went to my favorite translation of the Bible for these purposes, which is the message. Uh, and here are here's a big chunk of Amos, and uh, you'll get you'll get something out of this, I guarantee. Here it is, bluntly spoken. Oh, and by the way, this is addressed from God to the United States Senate today, in right. my personal opinion. Yep. <laughs> here it is, bluntly spoken, because you run roughshod over the poor. And take the bread right out of their mouths. You're never going to move into the luxury homes you have built. You're never going to drink wine from the expensive vineyards you've planted. I know precisely the extent of your violations, the enormity of your sins. Appalling. You bully right-living people, taking bribes right and left, and kicking the poor when they're down. I can't stand your religious meetings. I'm fed up with your conferences and conventions. I want nothing to do with your religion projects, your pretentious slogans and goals. I'm sick of your fundraising schemes, your public relations and image making. I've had all I can take of your noisy ego music. When was the last time you sang to me? Do you know what I want? I want justice, oceans of it. I want fairness, rivers of it. That's what I want. That's all I want. Amen. Amen. Uh, I have been uh, following to see when this travesty of a uh, tax bill is going to be voted on this afternoon. We haven't heard yet. Um, Steve Schmidt, who, you know, I I realize helped to bring Sarah Palin to To America. To America. He did. but he has been real loud about this and well, how yeah. this is uh, affecting everyone. Um, and he ha- he and also Claire, McC- Claire McCaskill have been highlighting the fact that this afternoon uh, there has been a list from 
the lobbyists on K Street as to what is going to be included last minute in this bill. Yes, that is not being shared yep. with anyone in the Democratic Party. Right, right. It's just it's a list. It's a wish list. It's a, it's your Christmas card list. It's your a Christmas tree list. Yep. All the shit you're going to get when we ram this thing through that doesn't exist. There is no bill at this moment. There's no bill. There's just a whole bunch of promises and a sack full of votes. And we'll shove it through, and then we'll cobble together something later. Uh, Steve Schmidt tweets, the United States Senate has gone completely off the rails. Nope. Lobbyists are writing the bill in secret, and duly elected Democratic U.S. senators have no idea what's in it. True. The corruption of what used to be the world's greatest deliberative body is a tragedy. It is a tragedy. Uh, this this is not the Senate. This is the Republican Senate. It's the Republican Senate. Mm-hmm. Well, and but he does say the Democrats have no, have no idea what's in it. Sure, I, I get so, the fact that yeah. he's doing that by you know by reverse negative, and he's he's very clear about that. But I really do think there should be a rule that when you talk, because I've seen this way too much. Yeah, it's yep. the hand wringing about the Congress and how the Congress does it. The Congress does that. Now, oh my God, the Congress is fucked. No, it's the, you know, this is what it, it came to me today, Blue Gal. As if, as if from heaven. We don't need a third party. We need a second party. Because yep. we don't have two political parties. We have a political party with all the warts and features and endearing qualities and grotesque excesses occasionally of a political party throughout mm-hmm. all history. And we have an authoritarian cult run by monsters. Yep. That's what we have. I would love a second party that would displace the monster party, but we don't need a third one. We need a second one. And we need people to quit pretending there's any equivalence at all between the two. Yep. That's my big wish for Christmas. We're talking to you, CNN. Yeah. CNN, if you want to go over to Media Matters, the, the article at Media Matters you need to look at this week is how CNN both sidered Donald Trump's retweets mm-hmm. of far right wing British organization whose hate speech was responsible for the assassination of a political candidate. Mm hmm. And CNN went full whole hog of, you know, if I saw those videos, I'd probably be real upset, too. They're fake. They are fake racist videos Mm -hmm. put out by a racist hate group. On purpose, for the purpose of inciting violence. Conspiracy theory promulgating hate group. Mm -hmm. And everyone in Britain knows it. Mm -hmm. This is why it's creating such a problem over there, is there's no question as to who Britain first is. Everybody knows. Now, look, everybody knows who neo-Nazis are here, too. Right. We know who they are. You know which it's, party they belong what, to, and too. And they're for, yes. Yeah. But we also know that the president, the so-called president of the United States, is making excuses for all of this crap. And it's, I mean, we're closing in. I know we're closing in. I'm not dancing jigs about this. I'm sad about it. That this is where our country's going. Oh, yeah. Incred- this is. I'm not dancing a jig. No. I did not dance this morning. Finding out that he had been flipped. flipped and that this is going, you know, this is this is a sad day, folks. This is this is a fundamental misunderstanding between our two tribes, mm-hmm. the tribe of normal, healthy, sane people and the tribe of bigoted, gun nut, blood drunk monsters who are the Republican Party. We're not happy that we had that we were proven right about George W. Bush. We were very sad about that because that means there's a giant pile of burning shit that we have to clean up because you people cannot be trusted with power. And we got about a third of the way through cleaning that shit up, and then you elected someone who was actually worse than George W. Bush. And laugh about it. Mm -hmm. Never underestimate. Never underestimate how much conservatives hate this country. Mm -hmm. Really, really fucking hate this country. Just as a thought experiment, just consider that they're not mistaken. They're not wrong. They're not misguided. They're not economically anxious. That might be true, but it's irrelevant. That they just fucking hate this country. Mm-hmm. Conservatives mm-hmm. hate this country. They hate what, what it's been. They hate where it's going. And there's nothing more re- that reeks worse than treason wrapped in a flag. Yep. And there's nothing that oh, reeks worse. And it's wor- treason wrapped in a flag uh, laughing because we're, we're making those liberals mad. Right. And that's, and that's all they— And that's setting fire to your own checkbook. To make liberals mad, to setting fire to your own retirement to make liberals mad, to setting fire to your own children's health care to make liberals mad. And it's really hard for people who don't, who haven't been sort of processing this for a long time and following it and tracking this storm as it approached landfall mm-hmm. for, for decades to understand that this is not that hard to understand. Mm-hmm. 
um, the, the, the new media keeps looking for more and more exotic explanations for why this thing is happening. And they won't because they're not cognitively or um, financially capable of encompassing the truth because the truth would kill them. Yeah. That it, The fact that they, if they had to have, start reporting that, that our problems in this country are caused by a group of domestic lunatics and terrorists called Republicans who hate this country, who are doing more damage to this country on purpose and fucking laughing about it than any terrorist will ever do, that that would scare the shit out of people. That's that's a plague. You're reporting on a plague in this country. And and so we're just going to pretend it's not happening. Or if it is happening, maybe everybody's equally to blame because we're not prepared to put our careers on the line and, and piss off our advertisers by telling you what's really going on, even though you can actually see it right out your window. I do want to thank Chris Hayes for having Norman Ornstein on last night. Yeah. That, to me, is a sign of the apocalypse, actually, at this point, because... Yeah. Uh, and and if anyone was going to do it, it was going to be Chris Hayes, who has even after right after Norman Ornstein's book came out and the editorial came out about yes, this is the Republican Party. Yes, it's the Republican Party. Chris Hayes was the one who still had Norman Ornstein on, so right. you know he ha- he apparently has that leeway. And last night had Norman Ornstein on to say yes, this is the Republican Party. I know these people. I'm friends with Susan Collins. I'm friends with Bob Corker. And they are sacrificing their reputations and their morality for this. And it's hard to fathom. Well, uh, that, that, that brings up one little thing. I'll just I'll mm-hmm. segue to it and come right back to the news of the day, which is that Charlie Sykes mm-hmm. now blocks me because I said, you know, both siderism sucks. And you were Rush Limbaugh yeah. for 20 years. Uh, did tweet today that he 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 interviewed Paul Ryan and Ron Johnson dozens, mm. maybe hundreds of times, <laughs> maybe yeah. dozens, hundreds of times about the dangers posed by the national debt. Really disconcerting to watch them now embrace a bill that will add a trillion more. Disconcerting? Yeah. Disconcerting. Yeah, because you're never going to lose a paycheck or miss a meal or worry about your kid's health care well, in that, your lifetime. That too, yes. But yeah, the part so is... Be disconcerted, yes. That, the part is, you interviewed the Lord of Cannibal Island a hundred yeah, times, yeah. and who swore that they didn't eat people. We don't eat people here on Cannibal Island. What, are you crazy? And now you're suddenly disconcerted that that guy is gnawing on the bones and sucking the marrow out and fucking laughing about it. Yeah. Except, Charlie, back when you could have actually made a difference, there was a guy named Paul Krugman. Seven years ago, who was saying, remember, Paul Ryan is the reason you interviewed him so much. He's from your state. He's from Wisconsin, too. He's on, been on your show a million times. And, and a decade ago, Paul Krugman was saying, Paul Ryan's a liar. The math just doesn't add up. This is back when he had his um, the Congressional Budget Office uh, recovery thing that they published that, uh, that, that exactly the same as this stinking lie of a tax cut that – Ryan swears the math works. It's all very complicated, but it'll all work out great. When actual mathematicians at the Tax Policy Center got a hold of it, they said, no, it doesn't. You're going to reduce revenue by this. You're going to blow a hole in the budget. You're going to blow a hole in the deficit. And Ryan's like, no, 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 it'll be fine. And the net effect would have been to slash Social Security, slash Medicare, slash Medicaid, and give a huge tax break to rich people. Mm-hmm. This, this was been the plan all along. This has been a plan for years. So Charlie Sykes, either you were the dumbest motherfucker on the planet or you are making so much money being a hate monger, being a racist, being a traitor to this country, that you didn't bother to check check the, the, the bottom line. You didn't bother to check anyone else who was telling you that Paul Ryan was a fucking liar. And now that Paul Ryan's going to get his wish and turn the federal budget into Galt's Gulch, now suddenly you're disconcerted. Because I talked to him many times, and he's uh, it's almost like he misled me. No, you're a moron, and you're a liar, and you have no business being in front of a camera. Every Charlie Sykes on a camera is a liberal seat that the corporate entities that run MSNBC is robbing us of. There should not be a Charlie Pierce on television. There should be, I'm sorry, a Charlie Sykes. There should definitely be a Charlie Pierce on television. There should be 20 Charlie Pierces on television. But there should be no Charlie Sykes on television. There should be no Bill Crystals. They should be out doing good works among the poor. They should go away, but they okay. don't. Was David Brooks off today? Yes. <laughs> I knew it because you didn't lose your mind this morning. No. I was expecting that if David Brooks wasn't off today, mm-hmm. uh, you know, we, we, we take turns guessing what his column is about this morning. Because it's always the same column. 
<laughs> it's always the same fucking column. No, but but what's the frosting on top of the same yeah. column? That because yeah. he does switch up the frosting every once sure. in a while. I was figuring my bet would be that he would be writing about how Benjamin Franklin was a Republican who never became president because of humility. Right, right. Because <laughs> he liked to fuck French ladies. He liked wine no, and he liked to fuck no, French ladies. That's, that's not it. He wouldn't say that. He would just talk about Benjamin Franklin's uh, peaceful humility in the in the face of fame and uh, and fortune, and not mention the uh, syphilis that killed him right. from the French hookers no. or his racism against the Germans in Philadelphia. No, because that <laughs> interferes with the whole idea that this has been this long, smooth, you know. Yeah. Transition from evolution to yes, the, right. the apex, to, which to is David modest, Brooks. To modest people, one, one modest person to another in the Republican Party. Okay, but that's that's my that's my little off the beaten path thing. Um, yeah, now well, we can switch back to to Flynn and talk about the, all the consequences of this. But it's been a really big, like wildly eventful week in news. It has. Uh, why don't you go ahead and read our our news roundup? list that you so kindly put together sure. while I was doing other things today. And uh, I'll stop you if I want to talk about something. That sounds you like stop, a great plan. You stop if you want to talk about something. Okay. How about that? Sure. I want to talk about everything. That's my problem. I'm a, I'm a blabbermouth, to quote Jackie Gleason. Did you ever see Jackie Gleason in, shut up, get on with the drift glass, I'm going. Ready? <laughs> yes. So Donald Trump lobbied several uh, Senate Republicans, one of whom went on the record, over the summer to wrap up the Russia investigation. Uh, lay people refer to this as obstruction of justice. Obstruction or attempted, of justice. Attempted, and it's not like, I don't know who said this, it wasn't me. We're not connecting the dots anymore. There's just one big dot. One big dot. And and it, it's the, they're, what they're doing on television today is just running the timeline. Here's the first lie. Here's the second lie. Here's the third lie. Here's the denial of the previous lies. Here's the admission. Here's And it's like... This isn't complicated at all. Yeah. This what is the, really simple. There was a Democratic senator, I, I'm sorry, again, I can't remember which one, sure. who thanked M Mueller and his team for staying on task and not uh, sort of jumping to, we've got him, you right. know, because we need, and, and this is why, you know, I know it's painful to go through this, folks. Right. I know that we all want to impeach the motherfucker already, as Bob Seska's button says, Uh but going through this with a fine tooth comb and finding everything and finding all of the Russian money laundering and all of the hotel corruption um, is going to make it that much easier down the road for um, a progressive movement to clean this up and create uh, regulations that prevent it from happening again. And here's a really important that's a really important point. Mm -hmm. There's one other thing we need to do. And you and I do this. You and I have done this. This is why we get frustrated. You know, I've done this, I don't know, repeatedly over the last many years. We've been writing about politics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Every time I hear someone say, well, this is going to hang around the Republican Party's neck like an albatross. No, yeah. I say, fuck yeah. you. No, of course it's not. Of course it's not. Because we've been through this movie already. You might not remember the Bush administration or the Clinton administration or the Obama administration or birtherism or the Iraq war or torture or Gitmo or any of that shit. I do. Every one of those things was going to be the thing around which uh, would be hung around Republicans' necks and they'd never live it down, except the media will not remember anything that didn't happen yesterday. They will well, not contest. It doesn't feed into a both side narrative. Right. They're just yep. not going to do it. They're not going to do it. I remember Peggy Noonan, who's now a respected MSNBC contributor, mm -hmm. uh, saying about torture. When, when the, the, the oh, news yeah. broke that the Bush administration had, had authorized the use of torture as national policy, mm -hmm. and, she, and her response was as if she'd bitten into a mouse. <laughs> yeah. A, a rotten mouse. Her, her face went, oh. And then she went, you know, this can't do anybody any good. A great nation, you know, I'm sure there's processes in place that this won't happen again. Sometimes you just need to move past these things. You just need to move on. And you know what? She's right. And That's you know what? Exactly. She's on Morning Joe this week. And what? how does Morning Joe introduce her? Who doesn't love Peggy Noonan? Everybody loves Peggy Noonan. Don't, doesn't everybody love Peggy Noonan? Look, all the hands went up in my both siderist team of people who, if they don't raise their hands, are, I'm going to fire them. Right? And what was she there to do, Blue Gal? She was there to both cider the shit. Sure as <laughs> shit was. Story. She was there to say, <laughs> and I'm, I'm going to quote now. Well, it struck me yesterday as I watched the extraordinary White House meeting with the two empty chairs representing the Democrats who didn't come to the meeting, I just thought, Obamacare. Yeah. yeah because suddenly, yeah. the idea that they're going to take this half-assed, shitty, 
tax bill that no one's scored, that no one's measured, that no one knows what the fuck is going on with it, that, that they won't even share with anyone, and sneak it through. Um, just like Obamacare. It's just like Obamacare. No, and they all sat isn't. around, and they all yeah. got their dicks out and got really, really excited. Go, yeah, you're so right, Peggy. Oh, my God, it's so much like Obamacare, I could scream. And you can really see the Percocets and the Bloody Marys kick in when, yeah. once she yeah. starts getting onto a topic. That she wants to talk about. She doesn't want to talk about George Bush. Doesn't want to talk about Dick Cheney or impeachment or anything like that. She wants to talk about how Democrats and Republicans are exactly the same. And Joe Scar. By the way, I bet I was researching uh, the history of Norman Ornstein's uh, blackballing from the Sunday shows, and there's an article at the Nation about specifically about it. Uh, And in 2013, his book came out in 2012. You know, saying this is the Republicans' fault. And uh, in 2013, uh, The Nation wrote an article about, you know, uh, he's not allowed on the Sunday shows no more because right. uh, he doesn't feed into the both sider narrative. No, that fast. He was unpersoned David that fast. David Korn mm-hmm. of Mother Jones mentions uh, the book, mentions the it's as, it's as bad as it looks or it's, all, it's even worse than it looks. The mm-hmm. Norman Ornstein book on the air on a Sunday show. I think it was ABC this week. Mm-hmm. And Peggy Noonan interrupts him while he's mentioning Norman Ornstein's book and says, oh, boo-hoo. Right, right. Because you know, she doesn't want to talk about that shit. No, she does. She wants to talk about how Barack Obama gets some of the blame for Mr. this shitty... Mr. Obama. Mr. Not Mr. President Mr. Obama. Mr. Mr. Obama, Obama gets, gets yeah. some responsibility here for how he bullied the, through Obamacare. And there, Peggy, and, black Twitter noticed you right. and, this and the, week. And the, <laughs> and the response... And this is why what you watch on television looks the way it does. Because if you put a liberal on that panel for 30 seconds, they would fucking level her. She would sober up real quick. She would sober up and run away, leaving a little trail of urine all the way out the studio. And she'd never come back. Mm -hmm. And then she'd go to ABC who would hire her because she's on a list somewhere of someone you always hire because you can plug them into this position. And they'll sit there and whisper about how isn't it a shame that Ronald Reagan is dead? And isn't it – weren't we great once and now – Everyone's fucked it up, and it's all everyone's fault, and isn't that a shame? Can I have my beverage now, please? Mm -hmm. And that's what you look at when you watch television. And this is the part where where liberals really have to step up because we out here in the cornfield cannot impeach Donald Trump or take any action uh, with our senators who are both Democrats and both lovely um, that will change anything electorally. What we can do is actually make sure – that the Trump administration is actually hung around the necks of Republicans. Yep. So that when, they, yep. when you see them move to the closet to get those tricorn hats out and get those gas and flags out and say, I never heard of Donald Trump. I'm a Tea Partier. I'm an independent conservative. You bitch slap them verbally. And, and anyone who puts a microphone to them or camera to them and, and reports on this brand new movement that has nothing to do with Donald Trump, go after them. Yep, and I, I, I do think that that is the one response you can give people before you block them right. on Twitter if they're if they're Trump trolls, mm-hmm. is say next year don't come to me and say you're an independent constitutional conservative libertarian who never liked Donald Trump's tweets. Yeah, they're gonna, burn your lifeboat, baby. They're gonna they're gonna try it. They're gonna they're gonna the try thing. it. And, they're gonna but try. Even it. individually, if you can let them know, because they're mm-hmm. walking tall now and saying. You know, it was Barack Obama unmasking Flynn that did it. Right. That did it. It's Barack. Because yeah, that's what that's what Fox is teaching them to say. And this is so, where this is where you and I will you, differ. You need to burn the lifeboats. Right. And and those people, I, I do not believe, can be reformed or helped because they're they're in too deep. Yep. Their personality right. will 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 implode if they ever have to walk anything back. So they're well, never going to Fox Fox News, as you said, the Bush off machine. Right. People also forget to the extent to which Fox News created the Tea Party. Right. That they the rallies were got free advertising on Fox News. Wall to wall Fox, Fox News covered. personalities showed up at these rallies in major cities right. as draws for people. Glenn Beck and Sean Hannity traveled to these places in Texas and I think Georgia. Uh, and you know, there's this map of we're going to beat all these tea parties. We're not appearing as official Fox News people. We're no. just interested in what they're doing. And, yeah, right. This isn't the Republican base going nuts because a black guy's president. They're a bunch of fucking racists. This is a whole new movement. A a whole new movement. movement. Just came out of nowhere. We don't know what happened. Ooh, they were worried crazy. about the deficit. They were worried about the deficit. Right. Think about that compared to so what if we're you, do, dealing with today. Yeah. If you don't want to go through all of this again in two years or four years or six years, if, if, you, if it's finally time to actually stop these people, and start cleaning up their mess long term. 
fixing the long-term problems that the Republican Party has created in this country. We have to stop the media, the corporate media, from doing the thing that they want to do more than anything else on God's earth. And that is pretend that this is not a problem, that it is an everybody-everything problem, that it's a both-sides problem, and it's it's hard to do because you can't vote them out of office. But they can be reached. I have seen Chuck Todd shit himself. He get really pissed yes. off. Yep. When yep. I guess liberals are just going to go on now and just say both sides. Because I've heard you do. guys on Twitter worry, complaining about both sides. But you know this really is both sides. Got to talk about it. And yeah. that means yeah. he heard you. That means you you pinpricked right. that surface. I want everybody, if you're listening to me now, put your fists in the air. Mm-hmm. Burn the lifeboats. Right. They don't get. Out of this and one. And you know what? Trump is the Republican Party, and the Republican Party is Trump. Yep. And Republicans, any Republicans who who want to do um, what a few of them have done, um, which is, my party is completely nuts. I'm a Democrat now. Mm-hmm. Welcome mm-hmm. with open arms. But yep. any Republican, like Joe Scarborough, who wants to fence straddle, like Matthew Dodd, who yep. wants to fence straddle, right. Right. who can't who can't leave for financial and psychological reasons, mm-hmm. has to continue to pretend I'm not. I, I will admit the Republican Party is evil, but Democrats are equally evil. They are the worst of them yep. because they know they're lying. Yep. The average Republican voter is a moron. They don't realize their brain is dead. They don't realize that they're saying things that are untrue and that contradict the lies they said yesterday. They're just, you know, they're just livestock. But these guys know what they're doing. They're making a financial and and professional decision to continue to lie to people long after they know it's a lie. Because the truth would set them back a few hundred thousand dollars a year, period. While we're burning the lifeboats as well, uh, make sure you repeat over and over again just what this is doing to the deficit and that they never get to complain about deficit spending ever again. And mark this day, if this bill passes and we don't know yet. I'm, I'm sorry, I just don't know. It's it's yeah. central time, 431 right now. I don't know if it's passed yet or not or if it's going to pass. But And just remember, Bush administration, George W. Bush ran on getting rid of budget surpluses mm-hmm. and swore that the def- we would never go back to deficits again. And every Republican lined up behind him, every, every David Bruce, every Bill Crystal, every Republican think tank said, no, 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 deficits are a thing of the past. Remind them that this is this has happened with your party over and over again, we know you're lying. So who are you lying to? This is a scam to take an enormous amount of money and give it to a handful of billionaires who finance all the shit you do. It's straight up quid pro quo. That's all this is. Mm-hmm. So what happened today? Well, we know Michael Flynn pled guilty right. uh, and pledged his full cooperation. Um, at this moment, again, there's, there's, no, um, there's no news on the Republican bill. Um, I do wonder if Donald Trump will be around to sign it. <laughs> Um, I do wonder if anyone but the dirty hippies will remember that Trump promised five times to never cut Medicaid, and this bill definitely will cut Medicaid. Um, I know that Vox mentioned it, but you know, outside of that, who who knows what's going to happen? I do know that Steve Mnuchin, creepy Bond villain with creepy Bond villain wife, Steve Mnuchin, mm-hmm. um, swore <laughs> that he had a hundred people working twenty four hours a day. To crank out economic analysis and scenarios to prove that this wouldn't cause anything and it would be great. Regrow your hair, make your dick longer, everything will be great. And it turns out when they actually contacted the people at the Treasury, they had no idea what he was talking about. No one's working on that. No homework, just, no yeah. nothing. Yep. That's, that's, not even, that's not even exaggerating five people into 20 and 20 into 50. He just pulled a number out of his ass because, hey, I'm not accountable. No one's going to fire me. I get to fly around the country with my with my wife and pose in front of money. Right. And that's why she sleeps with me, because I have yep. a lot of money. And yep. so I'm not accountable for anything. I'm fucking rich. Didn't didn't you read the fine print? Rich people don't have to play by the rules. That's what Donald Trump promised us. Um, Donald Trump has said that a government shutdown would be good for him personally and politically, rather. Now, yep. someone needs to tell him that Bob Mueller isn't on that clock. <laughs> Yeah, he will continue to work even if the government's shut down. He what? shows up yes. just for fun, yeah. like we do. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Donald Trump, who knows uh, three people, who knows a bunch of people, we'll get there. Welfare reform is back. Oh. Welfare reform is Donald Trump during one of his rambling speeches. You know, people like welfare reform, right? You want welfare reform. I know people, many, again, with, with, his, many people. with his close personal friend, Manny Peoples. Many people. I know a guy. I know people who work three jobs and they make less than the, the, the guy who lived next to him that doesn't do anything. 
Donald Trump doesn't know anybody who works three jobs because Donald Trump doesn't know anybody who works for a living. Donald Trump knows people who steal for a living and lie for a living and, and whore for a living. But Donald Trump doesn't know anybody who actually does an honest day's work for a living. And Donald Trump certainly doesn't know anybody who works three jobs. And Donald Trump isn't within a billion miles of anyone who's on welfare or public assistance in any way. That is just – but what that is is the old Reagan lie. The old racist Reagan lie. The old Lee Atwater, you can't say N-word, 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 but you sure can say welfare, welfare, welfare. It's, it's, we're going to, the base isn't whipped up enough. So we know what we're going to do. We're going to throw a little welfare queen into the mix. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk a little bit about those uh, young bucks eating those T-bone steaks, taking your hard earned money because they're shiftless, lazy Negroes. That's all that was. Mm -hmm. And of course his base eats it up because they're terrible, terrible people. Um, more sexual harassment fall out this week. I'm sorry. This deserves its own show. And <laughs> it really does. Uh, everybody from Garrison Keillor to John Conyers to a guy named Matt something. Matt something. Oh, Matt Lauer. That's right. Um, yeah. Are all gone now or are on their way out. Al Franken, there's there's six women now yeah. who've said he pinched them. And, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. it's, it's something that I've been thinking a lot about in my own personal history. And I don't know if I've talked about this on the podcast before, but... I was molested at 12 uh, by a uh, landlord uh, in an apartment building where my parents uh, and I lived. And uh, it was tickling until he touched me in the wrong place. And it happened more than once. Um, it happened in front of his wife and children because uh, he could get away with it. Um, and it was... It, it was a very typical response that I had of going out of my body right, and right. observing it so that you can sort of protect yourself. But the last time he did it, I told myself, my 12-year-old self, stay in your body and tell yourself this is really happening so you can avoid it. And I, I consciously turned off that part of me that leaves the body to, to record it in my mind that, oh, yes, he's doing this to me. Mm -hmm. it's not, I'm not making this up, and I'm not just imagining it. And I had the power. Uh, first of all, I had a great relationship with my parents and be able to tell them anything. Um, the fact that I knew that I could tell them this had happened was enough for me. I didn't tell them, mm -hmm. but I knew I could. Right. And I knew that I could stay away from him and never see him again. I, I, I wasn't working for him. I wasn't, he was not in a position of trust with my parents or being a priest or a teacher or someone I needed to see ever again. Right. And I never saw him again after that. Uh, and so um, the power that I had within myself, because I had such a good relationship with my parents at 12, uh, protected me. Um, go, moving forward, though, when I had a job in my 20s, up on the top floor of an office building where it was senior management of my comp of a company and realizing n not having the the madmen uh example to follow of oh this is what secretarial life is like yeah. i didn't realize cuz i was young mm -hmm. and not realizing that no part of your job performance is you're supposed to look hot right but I noticed it enough to rebel against it. And I just, I unconsciously and somewhat consciously destroyed my career on that floor. I yep. wore camo pants to work <laughs> because I was not going to participate in that crap. Uh -huh. And I was not going to be um, on display. Um, and, and they were proud because they had hired someone who had an Ivy League master's degree as a secretary. Look what we can do. We uh -huh. can hire someone who's got credentials up the wazoo, you know, to be here answering our phones. Right. That's how high up we are. Um, but I also saw that, no, you were supposed to wear a lace blouse and a, and a short skirt and pumps and yeah. look hot. You know? front, it's called front office material. Right, front office material. That's, That's what right. you're supposed to do. And I was not going to do that. And as I think more and more about the way my life has progressed, I realize that so much of my um, personal uh, appearance, the way I present myself, has been um, both a rebellion and a wall against being on dis being on sexual display. Right. Um, and I don't see that as uh, 
sort of hurting in a way. I mean, that's some some women gain 150 pounds and and you know tip and on purpose uglify themselves because they're in so much pain that they can't uh, they need to build that wall to mm-hmm. to not be sexy because they'll be hurt again. And right. and the, for those women, I just feel so much, uh, you know, sympathy and love and, and want to embrace them. That is so horrible that something happened to you that it's that bad. Mm -hmm. For me, it's more of a fuck you to toxic masculinity. Yeah. Uh, And it's everywhere. And it's everywhere. Plus, I'm also a postmenopausal mother of three who's 54 years old, and I'm not really... And, trying to have a bathing suit body anymore. And my but beautiful wife. It's also rebellion. Well, thank you. And my I know beautiful... you love me as I am, and that's I, nice. But, absolutely do. And I, 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 most of the time, I don't have a, a deal, an issue with it, although we always sort of, every once in a while, get a little pinprick about, oh, I should lose weight, I should lose weight. But, you know, the deal is, uh, it is a, it's a rebellion to just say, no, I'm not going to be that. Right. And to see on the other side so often, I've, I, and I do feel for women who are sitting there, especially this week and the and previous weeks, people who are defending Roy Moore, women who are defending Roy Moore, and the pressure that they obviously have felt their whole lives to be a good girl, to be a good Christian woman, to be anti-abortion all all the way to the point of defending this monster, right? Um, who was so unqualified to represent you, women of Alabama, before any of this came right. out. God, he's been a shitter. He is not good enough for you before any of this came out. Right. And now, and and the the thing about Roy Moore too. I mean, we've we've had a whole podcast about Al, my time in Alabama, but it has really come out a lot with this uh, textbook uh, course material that he participated in. That's where right. Women are supposed to not work outside the home. That's right. Not run for office. Not be in public, etc. And the the real. Old Testament uh, fundamentalist Christianity that says men get whatever they want, right? And you shut up, right? And that's that's the way God wants it. That's what it's. That's the way God wants it. Mm-hmm. And if you're behaving yourself and you want to go to heaven, you better behave. Yeah. And uh, I think that is that is what has kept the South. Uh, that and racism are what have kept the South back economically. Not treat countries that don't treat women as equals suffer economically. Well, and, they just do. Uh, and, and the and South suffers economically. It's and they're inextricably uh, linked yeah. because yeah, of are. the Bible, because of the yep, biblical yep. underpinnings yep. of white supremacy and yep. and misogyny. The two yep. are absolutely intertwined with each other because they both yep. come from the pulpit and they both come from the same place. You can loop in gays. You can mm-hmm. loop in anybody in the LGBT community, anybody who's an immigrant, anybody who's mm-hmm. poor. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're all bad people, yeah. and they're all inferior. And therefore, mm-hmm. as, because you are God's chosen people, because you're mm-hmm. superior to everyone, um, mm-hmm. how you treat them is up to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bible gives you no guidance other than the fact that you're better than they are. And as long as they know their place, nobody gets hurt. And to Would tie you... all of this together in a bow, because we're at over an hour now. Well, let me just mention uh, one last thing. Yeah. Not yeah. only are we in a cold civil war, we're in a cold holy war. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. And and everything that you just said is Old Testament patriarchy. Absolutely. And yep. Mary came to fix that. Yes. <laughs> she came at this time of year to fix that. And I, I want to wish everyone a happy Advent. A happy, happy Zappadan, which starts Monday. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frank Zappa, the anniversary of his passing is December 4th. And I believe his birthday is December 21st or 22nd. Yeah. That period between the 4th and that, that time of his birthday is known throughout the blogosphere as Zappadan. It is a non-religious holiday to celebrate Frank Zappa. You should go out and... Find some Zappa lyrics or some Zappa writings. Look at some Zappa videos and enjoy uh, the art that he uh, that inspired his life. Um, but to tie a bow on all of this, uh, Donald Trump <laughs> and his tweets about Christmas. Uh-huh. Uh huh. He he tweeted that um, he tweeted about family, Mary, Joseph, and their child. That's right. What about the and... other children? <laughs> You know, James. Yeah, yeah. And and, uh, uh-huh. and uh, yeah. Uh, Jimmy, which we don't talk about. You know, 
Yeah, this the child of Joseph and Mary we don't talk about. Yeah. No, a, a lot of people replied to that tweet with, um, you know, the father of Jesus isn't Joseph in right. Christian theology. Right. Uh, but, uh, no, that he has not deleted or corrected that. Well, he's a anyway. moron. He's a complete he's a fucking moron. moron. And, and now, I'm not going to excuse him that way. Though. No. I'm, I'm with John Oliver. This is, you're not allowed to say he's too incompetent to have done wrong no. because he knows what he's doing. Sure. And, no, no, that's, uh, he, he is a, yeah. a really, uh, a, a perfect, this is, he's a perfect avatar for the Republican base. He's a perfect mixture of, of, of absolute cocksure, always wrong, but never in doubt pig ignorance mm -hmm. and racism mm -hmm. and cunning so he's he he's evil and he's stupid and you know what i think harlan ellison probably said you can get around one or the other of those but you put them <laughs> together you can't get around that you can't yeah. negotiate with it you can't turn them around you can't disprove them mm -hmm. i want to run through just a, the, the very quickly the rest, the rest of the, the rest of the list real quick um yep. as you know that uh blue Gal already mentioned uh, donald trump has put our our alliance with england <laughs> at risk um, by re retweeting right-wing fascist bullshit from England. Even Theresa May, who should be a natural ally of Donald Trump, has mm -hmm. had to go on and, and say, fuck you, Donald Trump. Um, there's talk of disinviting him from state visits to, to England. There's going to be so many protests. They're not going to be able to. It's, it's like, you know, a small community college having Nazis on campus. Yeah. They can't afford the security that that's going to no. take to have Donald Trump in their country. Uh, Paul yeah. Manafort yeah. is currently out on bail. for Four houses he yep. put up. Uh, for his bail, and, his four houses. And his four passports, $11 million. He had to put up 11 million bucks. Jefferson Beauregard Sessions, because he is a lawyer, has refused to answer any questions about whether Donald Trump told him to obstruct justice, which which is, is the answer. If you're not going to answer the question, then we know the answer, which is he told you to do it. And you you have and you're, and you're a little rat looking for a way the hell off this ship. And there is no way off this ship. It's going down with you on it, pal. Uh, right now, uh, Donald Trump hasn't been uh, president for, uh, for has been president for less than a year. Eighty one days of golf courses and counting. When he's not golfing, he's tweeting. When he's not tweeting, he's just grabbing microphones and taking credit for shit. That's mm -hmm. all he is. That's all he does. He, and and again, he's a perfect representation of the typical Republican voter for whom who thinks he's doing a brilliant job. Um, Tillerson's probably on the way out at State Department. Now that he's done doing what they hired him to do, which is fire everybody and destroy American foreign policy, we're going to bring in Mike Pompeo, you know, who likes torture and thinks the Russia thing is overblown and shouldn't be investigated. That guy is going to be in charge of foreign policy. Uh, I didn't realize this till today. I, I heard about it, but I'm sort of overwhelmed by things. The Office of Special Counsel has opened a case file on Kellyanne Conway to see yeah. if she violated the Hatch Act when she made comments about Doug Jones, because you're not supposed to do that. And, of course, Kellyanne Conway is just one criminal among many. Um, mm -hmm. Donald Trump's still a birther. Apparently, he still thinks way down deep where the crazy lives that there's no way Barack Obama could be born in this country because the voices in my head tell me otherwise. So he's telling people behind closed doors that he still he still thinks Barack Obama is born in Kenya. He's, he's lying. Eh, it's not true. And he also thinks that it wasn't him on the tape of him saying shit that we have and we know and we see the video of him getting off a bus. But that's all been faked, even though he's admitted to it and apologized for it. Um, and he wants to know why the deep state isn't locking up Hillary. And he has revived the Joe Scarborough dead intern scandal or conspiracy, I should say. It's not a scandal. It's a conspiracy, which you will not hear about on this podcast other than to say, Jesus Christ, there is no bottom to the Donald Trump barrel. Uh, Donald Trump told Sh uh, Schumer and Pelosi not to bother to come to a meeting because fuck you, I'm not going to do a deal with you. So they didn't come. And then he got mad they didn't come and sat between a bunch of chairs and said, isn't it a shame? <laughs> now, you all know the Washington Post caught everyone's favorite rat fucker, James O'Keefe, trying to spread fake news about Roy Moore. Now think about it. There's a child molester running for the Senate in Alabama. Mm -hmm. The reaction from the conservative press is, how can we destroy the opposition to make sure he gets into office? Not that it's horrifying, because they have no soul. James O'Keefe is a soulless vampire fuck. And so he has a perfect place to live, which is in the conservative media universe. And you know who donated $10,000 to Project Veritas, which is James O'Keefe's little rat fucking operation, a month before Trump announced his candidacy? The Trump Foundation. Yeah. That's why you and me, Blue Gal, and the Illinois Times from time to time are the liberal media. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Are you done? Is that I'm it? I'm done. I'm done. I'm all done. I got a cat here who's going, why aren't you petting me? What's wrong with yeah. you? Yeah. We love you guys. Stay, stay safe. Stay, stay peaceful. Mm -hmm. Find a place in your mind to stay calm. Because this is going to be another a long haul, but we are, this is building time. 
This is I know we're losing a lot of games at this point, we are. and I don't mean that blithely. No. I mean it in terms of we're losing stuff. But the reason this investigation is taking so long, I said this on Twitter to someone the other day, uh, what followed the Gilded Age in history was the Progressive Era. It's true. And the similarities between that time and this time are remarkable. Mm -hmm. uh, it, and it was women and people who, and people of color, the NAACP, let's not forget, uh, started publish, publishing their magazine and uh, hanging out a flag every time someone was lynched outside their New York City office. Mm -hmm. All of that happened during the Progressive Era. Yes, it did. So women and people of color led the way on that. And and also uh, new media. It was magazines. You know, it was that was new uh, mass media. And we we have a lot of technology at our disposal. So, you do. Um, it almost sounds like it's you. It's going to happen again. Did you study history at some point in your life? Bukiel? Yeah, I did. What? What? I how did that go? Degrees in it. it oh, was, that's right. You do. Yeah. You have degrees yeah, in history and theology degrees, and well, what else yeah, do you? Do? Stuff like that. Yeah. 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 So. Yeah. And I just like it anyway. I yeah. like learning about that stuff. And that's the progressive era had its problems, you know. Yes, it did. For sure. All eras do. Uh, not, I mean, that's that's the other thing. It, it, it does behoove all of us to study that era because the fact that the zeitgeist of the time was, yes, there was progress made in lots and lots of different areas. There are no saints within the progressive no, movement. No, that's, that's a know? really important lesson. <laughs> Remember the good old there days? Are no saints. The saints. The uh, suffragettes, a lot of them were flat out racist. Yes, they were. We don't want black uh, women you know, in our world. Absolutely. Thanks. absolutely. You, Woodrow Wilson yeah. was a freaking racist. Didn't he was. give a shit about uh, the the um, lynchings in the South. No. He wasn't going to bother with that. No. He had to be dragged kicking and screaming mm -hmm. to women's suffrage. Mm -hmm. And and as soon as Alice Paul, who also was a racist. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Um, but she went out to the West where women could vote and said, screw this. Don't vote for Woodrow Wilson. Don't vote for the Democratic Party. They're not going to help us. And, uh, you know, he's, he all of a sudden realized, oh, we're going to lose the West if we right. don't do something about this. So, OK. Uh, the West and, was the future. The West was the future. Mm -hmm. So he went along. And I, I'm just saying it's good to study this stuff because I guarantee you. This is the flow of history that we are in the middle of right, right. now. And the, and here's the here's another really important thing to study. I love history. You can kill history with a bad teacher, but history is mm -hmm. full of great, awesome, impossible to believe stories that are all true, and they all link together, and they all lead to to us, and we can learn from it. And there and there are damn few saints in history. Uh, there are damn few saints who move the world forward. There and and oh, who are perfect. Uh, they're great men, they're good men, they're great women, good women, but they're damn few perfect ones. But what is fascinating is that I like my history warts and all because I like a big, complicated, interesting story. Um, I, I look across the aisle and I see people who want it to be 1952. Yep. Not a day before, not a day after. 1952 was the perfect time. America was perfect. Everything was perfect. The world was perfect. Fuck you. Let's get back to 1952 right now. Anyone who tells me I can go back to then, even though I'm not going to even live then, I will vote for and, and devote my life to them as as an acolyte, as a member of their cult. Anyone who tells me otherwise is a monster who, who wants to make me unhappy and I will destroy. And it's it's really impossible to have a conversation between a group of people who believe history is a, a sweeping force that we can influence, that's full of interesting things and things we can learn, and people who think, nope, fuck you, 1952, that's it. Go back then. All our problems will be solved. Yada, 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 racism, blah, blah, blah. There's no way to have a conversation between those two people, which is why we cannot, as a country, continue half fox and half free. Right. And 1952 was the point at which a lot of these guys were able to get laid. Right. That's the thing. <laughs> um, and there's an article in The New York Times about dissatisfaction, uh, economic dissatisfaction between uh, among people the age of 52 to 61. Mm-hmm. Um, who are usually at the peak of their earning potential and have gotten <laughs> their lives together and yeah. all of a sudden. And it's turning out with this generation, that's just not the case. Nope. Uh, and in large part, it is because people um, at the top of their uh, career track who would ordinarily retire at 62 or 65 yep. aren't retiring. Yep. And it's not because it's 
you know, I really feel for the people who who aren't retiring because they can't, because right. they'll lose their house if they don't me. keep working. You know, yeah, that's going to be us. Uh, the folks that are surgeons, physicians, congressmen, uh -huh. senators who are working into their 80s and 90s because, hey, it's just fun to go to work it every day and that's all I want to do. Uh -huh. And uh, it's I, I realize it's not their responsibility to provide jobs for everybody else. No. But at some point, John Conyers, I'm talking to you. Uh, when you show up for work in your pajamas uh, twice, uh, it's time to retire. And I've been accused on Twitter of ageism because of this. And I am not advocating ageism. No. I am advocating that people understand that growing old has an impact sometimes on your mental capacities and when it does, and your physical capacities. And when it does, you are doing yourself, your community, your society, and your economy a favor by going off and enjoying your grandchildren. Mm -hmm. well, it sounds like, it. I'm not telling people to die. I'm not telling people. This to is die. not Logan's run people at 30. No, we're going to cut you off on an ice flow. Go write a book, yeah. go raise money for Voter registration. John Conyers, I know he his health is is deteriorating as well, and I'm sorry about that. But uh, and all of these charges and all of these settlements that would pay a thousand months of our mortgage mm -hmm. that are being paid by taxpayers to cover up sexual harassment. I'm sorry, I'm really mad about this. Uh, Blake Farenhold. I'm sorry, I got something in my throat. Uh, Blake Farenhold, yeah. ducky pajama boy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Look, I'm not saying cut people off and send them off on an ice flow. I'm saying there are stages of life that boomers have to start accepting. Right. And, uh, and another thing you have to start accepting is that the president of the United States needs, for the sake of this country, to be younger than you are. Yes. Because you're, you're old enough that it's too demanding a job. And your congressman needs to be younger than you are if you're in your 70s and 80s because it's a demanding job. It requires mental capacity. It requires physical capacity. And I've, I am disqualifying every presidential candidate. That means Elizabeth Warren. That means Bernie Sanders. That means Hillary Clinton. That means Joe Biden. They are disqualified because they're too old to handle the capacity, the job. They don't have the capacity to handle that job for four years in a way that we can guarantee uh, they will be as strong and healthy and mentally astute four years from now than, the, than they are now. Hey, can, I, can I mention one thing, Blue Gal? You know, yeah. you know what destroyed a big chunk, not not all of it, but a big chunk of the American manufacturing base or deteriorated it? I do, because you've told me a dozen times. What is it? It's uh, lack of succession planning. No succession planning, because dad started the factory in 1952, and yep. Yep. accidentally this became his career, or on purpose it became his career, and never thought he was going to die or retire. So he well, got. He didn't want his kid to work in a factory. He wanted his kid to work in a bank. Well, right? well, no, he, he, I mean, he he hoped his kid would work in the factory. But, but he sent his kid to college, which is great, and the kid came back and wanted to be a banker or a broker or a programmer or something else. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the factory had no one to take over, yeah. and dad hit 70, 72, 74 and sold it for property to move to Florida. Mm -hmm. And that little company on the corner that employed 10 or 15 or 20 people went out of business. Nobody knew what it did, but suddenly you know, four or five of those got to go out of business, and your neighborhood, your community is suddenly in a recession, and you can't quite figure out why. This country – sucks at succession planning because we're a youth culture. The idea that we're going to get old and we're going to get older and we're going to die is not something we want to talk about. So there is no succession planning. There's no idea that, you know what? I've hit the point where I need to train the next cohort of leaders because I'm not going to be here, but my legacy will be what I left behind. And we're, we and, and it, it, it has screwed up job planning, labor force planning, uh, uh, industrial planning, retail, it's, screw, it's screwing up a whole bunch of economic sectors because the people who are, who are, you plan to leave, so you build an entire education um, system behind that, aren't leaving. Yeah. So those people are getting trained and like, well, all right, I've got my degree, now what do I do? Well, yeah. why don't you go work at Walmart? Plenty of jobs at Walmart. So Class, we could talk for another hour. We could, but we really shouldn't. But and that's what we, we have next have week. A show come, we won't have a show coming out. This week, if we, if we you know, do that. That's what next week is for, right, Blue Gal? <laughs> I guess so. All right, let's roll. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Hobbs. Yay! Hobbs is shown with his best buddy, Dell. Yeah. Dell is a beautiful human baby in a car seat carrier. But let me tell you, 
it's clear that Hobbs has decided this human baby is going to have expert feline supervision. Mm? <laughs> no, this baby cannot say, you're not my supervisor. <laughs> Because Hobbs is saying, oh, hell, I'm not oh, your yeah. supervisor. I am your supervisor. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah. You, will, you will not be alone for the rest of my life. Yes. So Hobbs and Dell are on our Facebook page and website. And thank you for sending Hobbs and Dell in to us. And we appreciate it. You can send your internet kitty to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. Feel free to write us. We love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service. Go oh, postal, postal unions. unions. Letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Don't forget our gourmet coffee slash Hulu guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself or a Hulu subscription, you need to think about donating to us the same amount of money. Yeah. Hulu, I think, seven ninety nine a month. You know, how much do you pay for a gourmet coffee? Uh, if you can afford those things, uh, we would appreciate a donation. Mm -hmm. Don't forget our Amazon link at our website. We believe in buying local. We also believe in shopping Amazon with our link if your alternative is a big box store. And you know the things that you go to big box stores for. Gift wrap, uh, bows and ribbons. Uh, those kind of things that are, you know, generic, that you're not personally shopping for someone. Amazon has those things. Use our Amazon link. We get a cut. It doesn't cost you any extra money. Yep. And, uh, you, and, and you don't have to leave your house. It's Right. It's just like Agora Fabulous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I, you need to trademark that. I do. I have. Uh, it, is, it is now time to announce the latest winner of our beautiful bracelet cuff from foxwise.biz. Check out our website to see how great they look. The one we're giving away says resist, and it has snowflakes on either side along with our URL. If you want to buy something from foxwise.biz, don't forget to use the coupon code DGBG2017 for 20% off anything, including custom orders. You want to get those custom orders in for kids and grandkids. They have bookmarks. You can put the kid's name on them. Uh, foxwise.biz uh, for 20% off. We are running this contest as a way of saying thank you to our donors. Uh, Foxwise.biz has donated these 10 cuffs bracelets to us for free. Um, and we're very grateful to them that she's a good liberal and we love her. And uh, it's a woman-owned business, so you can't go wrong. Uh, the winner this week is Kelly from Illinois. Kelly? Kelly, yeah. Aww. Kelly won, and we'll be sending her... Uh, bracelets we're waiting for the next order of bracelets to come to us but when they get here we're going to send that to her and we're also going to send her a ten dollar gift card to donors choose and that's our favorite favorite charity of ours you can use that ten dollar gift certificate to uh, pass it along and donate to a school in your area or a classroom that is looking for help in an area you support like they want science fiction books they want snacks they want uh, autism supplies, supplies for autistic students, students with autism, uh, all of that. You can choose the classroom that that $10 gift card goes to. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Actually, there's details for all this stuff. You know, the, the bracelet and the Amazon link, and we've got also have swag. Uh, we have Both Sides Don't t-shirts. We have a new bumper sticker, mm -hmm. by the way. Really? Uh, yeah. It says, uh, you can't be pro-life and molest children. <laughs> Believe well, it or not, you can't. <laughs> I, I have a I have a new bumper sticker I'm going to talk to Theology of Pio about. Yeah? Fia justitia ruat uh, silum. What? Let justice be done, though the heavens fall. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> well... You know that that that's one of those Mensa ones. You know. Oh, it's, it's you Latin. You got to know all the Latin and Greek and stuff. What what language is that? That's Latin. I think oh. is I don't I don't speak Latin. I don't pronounce well in Latin, but that's the the best I could do in Latin. Because it sounded like it was something out of Twin Peaks, where he's talking backwards yeah. about the pretty bird. I do that a lot too. <laughs> <laughs> Please share our show on Facebook or Twitter, and thank you for doing that. Yeah. Hey, Drift Class, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Oh, look, the Internet Kitties have Jared. In the next to be indicted pool. You know why? Because Internet Kitties know stuff. Let's think about living. Think about living. Let's think about loving. Think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the popping and the loving, 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 loving. Let's forget about the 
Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license. Copyright 2017, Drift Glass, Blue Gal Podcast. Fake news, sparkle farters.